It's time for your Elimination Chamber review, right here on the Smart Busters channel. Um, I didn't, I didn't watch the pre-show. Tell the people what happened. Oh, what the hell happened? Team oh, shit. Team Shit fought Rybaxel, and there were Curtis Axel chants in the audience. So that's all. That's you need to all know. you need to know. <laughs> team Shit won, by the way. So yeah, fuck WWE. Fuck? All right, but on to the actual show. Right, the arena is exactly the same as Raw, except there's like little chamber logos on the Titantron, so it's like, in a video game, when you want to unlock all the arenas, there's no point in doing that anymore. The new games, we don't play any of the new wrestling games, do they have that now, where you can play at different arenas? Because they're all just the Raw arena, so what's the point? Yeah, it's fucking BS, man. Whatever, all so... All creativity is gone. The first match was Swagger vs. Big T Langston, with a really funny Zeb Coulter promo, as Swagger came out. We the people chance in Sue. they love this guy, as do we. The announcers were horning out the network during the match. We're supposed. I don't. I don't care. Biggie Langston needs to go to a plastic surgeon and get breast reduction. I mean, this isn't just pecs. He actually has that problem where you take too many roids and your hormones get fucked up, flapping all over. It's disgusting, and I can't take him seriously. You really can't. And it's sad because he kind of does cool things sometimes. He's a little bit like Scott Steiner with the overabundance of belly to belly suplexes, but he does some cool things. But you, there's no way anyone's going to take him seriously. Brilliant commentary, by the way. Cole goes, this is a direct quote now. I'm not even making this up. If Swagger wins, he could become the Intercontinental Champion. <laughs> Mind you, this is an Intercontinental title match. Can someone explain what he meant by that? Like, what was he thinking? I don't, I don't care. <sighs> oh, another brilliant thing. During Coulter's promo, he said the Big E and Big E stood for enough. But then Cole's like, at the bef before the match, Coulter said the E stood for big embarrassment. That's not what he said. Pay attention to the fucking show that you're on, please. Holy shit, man. So we had some blood. Swagger's mouth was bleeding. Every single match that Big Titty Langston's in, someone, someone bleeds. starts bleeding. Oh, you fucking smarts, you love this guy. You think Ryback is dangerous? When does he make people bleed out of their mouth? Cole kept calling him Langston, by the way. Great job. <laughs> I don't know. Swagger did an arm drag off of the top rope, which was very impressive. I thought it looked cool, but Big Titty Langston ended up winning. It was a good match, I guess. Good opening match. How many times have we said that? <laughs> good opening match. I don't know, but it was a good match. And then it made, what made it better was right afterwards, Bad News Barrett did a promo yes. on his ridiculously high podium. Pretty funny. And then what did we get after that? We got a shitty goat promo. Of just him reading off of a script, talking very similar to how John Cena always talks. But how he had, he literally did the I have to claw and fight and work my way to the top promo. Why do you like this guy? <laughs> then they officially announced Hulk Hogan will be on Raw tomorrow. Smarks everywhere cried, real wrestling fans everywhere stood up and just cheered. Because Hulk Hogan's the fucking best ever. But, 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 but Sigler might not have a spot now. <laughs> Uh, so the New Edge Outlaws fought the Usos. I don't know. One of the Usos was like rolling around on the floor in pain after a spot. And then Cole said very calmly, that's not good for the Usos. <laughs> and I just thought like, Jimmy Uso was in the ring doing cool moves. I'm like, the people who are there at the place have no idea which Uso is doing what. I just, that was an interesting thought that came to my mind. But Cody Rhodes can take kicking lessons from these Usos. They make their kicks look fucking real. It's awesome. You don't see them slapping or anything. I think... I don't know, maybe we're officially Usos fans? I, I like the Usos. I think we're fans of their work here in Dem Demi. But the Outlaws win anyway with a roll-up. I'm not disappointed. I'm shocked, though. I didn't think yeah, they would I, win. I did not think that. But, alright, I am not. I like having them around. After this match, we get another Bad News Bad promo. Only this time the podium didn't work. It didn't go all the way up. <laughs> but he made it work. And he made it funny. He made fun of it. And I like Bad News Barrett. Fuck all you haters, man! Why are you drinking that haterade? <laughs> So then we get more network horn. This went on for fucking four hours. Ugh. They had to bring the camera behind the announce table and show you, here's what King's doing on the network. And he's oh. flailing at his iPad, <laughs> trying to press the, press the play button, and it's like not working. So then they show, what's JBL doing on his laptop? And JBL's just sitting there like... <laughs> oh, I'm looking at my match. I was in my... Oh, God. Ugh. Jesus. Stop with this horn. We know you have a fucking network coming out. So Darren Young fought Titus O'Neil. We want what, Lesnar what, Chance. What, what, what a disaster of a match. We want Lesnar Chance. We the people Chance. Just a totally dead crowd. 
commentators were making unrelated jokes the entire time. Yeah, way to bury the, t the guys in the ring. Yeah, well, Titus won, but it, it, they both lost. Darren Young, <laughs> right above, like, his asshole on his trunks, it said no days off. So, great, great placement there, <laughs> WWE. You know, seriously. No homo, but, all right. Bad News Barrett's back yet, yet again, and he does another promo. I fucking love this guy. I'm sorry. Every time he comes out, it's hysterical. And his theme music works. It, as soon as his theme hits, you just want to break out in laughter. It's funny. So then, here we go. Match of the year time. Oh, man. Sh now, Shields Wyatt's. This had the potential to be the biggest letdown of the year. Of maybe of all time. But no. It was like the payoff of the decade. This match was so fucking awesome. This is everything by, by attitude era standards, this match is five stars. This is everything a wrestle this whole feud is by definition what every wrestling company should strive to do. Yes. You build, build it up, up well beautifully. two factions that you have already even previously built up. An epic collision of just awesomeness. Past. This is awesome yeah. chance went on before the match started. Yeah, that's all you got to So fucking awesome. Roman Reigns chants are going on the whole time, so anyone who says he's not over can go fuck their face. Mm -hmm. Let's go Wyatt's, let's go Shield chants. We're like dueling throughout the entire match. This was the, this is, this was a wrestling atmosphere. It was old school. It was fun, man. Back when wrestling was fun. So, uh, yeah, it was fucking awesome. Seth Rollins. This match was the Seth Rollins show. <laughs> The guy did, oh my god, he, there was this one little flurry he did that was so impressive, did it, I can't even find it in here because I wrote down so much for this fucking match, but oh, Luke Harper, by the way, did the perfect drop kick. Yes, and Luke Harper did the flying goat as well. Luke Harper did that more convincing than fucking Cropper did. This was so fucking, I can't even, I can't even talk about this, it was so cool. I can't, ugh, this... I love this, because we wanted this to be good, we were so afraid it would suck, and it was just so good. It was perfect. It was, I want to watch this match over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. It was just that awesome. Rollins did that one Rollins spot did this thing where he did, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a, a monkey flip in midair. Over the turn. It's out, like something you do in WrestleMania 2000. Something that you don't see anymore. And when Dean Ambrose fights, it looks real. The way he just pounces on the guy and starts, like, pounding them into submission. Like, you can tell what everyone in the match's character is by the way they fight. That's why they're a good wrestler. Like, you can tell Bray Wyatt's an insane person. You can tell Dean Ambrose is an insane person. Luke Harper and Rowan are making the faces. It's so great. And I, I, I know what I've been touting off about Rollins, Rollins this whole time. But this match was, like, the Seth Rollins show. He did awesome shit, man. I can't even like. They, oh, that one thing where they went to suplex him off the turnbuckle and he like flipped and yeah, landed oh, on his yeah. feet. Who I think it was Harper did like a German suplex off the top rope, not the second rope, the top rope. And Rollins did like a flip in midair and landed on his feet. Got Harper out of the ring and then did the flying goat out and knocked him down. And then. Because Rollins is just so cool, not only will he do cool moves, he'll put his fucking body on the line. The two big Wyatts standing on the American, or the, what do you call it, just the regular announce table? Yeah. Throw him through the Spanish announce table. And then he's gone. He's done for the match. Wyatt and, um, what's his face? Ambrose brawl into the crowd, and then Wyatt comes back and Ambrose is gone. You don't know where he went. Leaving Reigns in the ring alone with the three Wyatts. He puts on a good fight. Uh, Wyatt had him in the Sister Abigail, and he fought out of it in what was a true wrestling moment. The hero just grabbing the heel's arm and raising it with the heel making faces. He spears Harper, but Wyatt hits him with the Sister Abigail. Which looked man. great, by the way. The Sister Abigail is a great We finisher. can't emphasize it enough. This match was fucking awesome. Find a way to see it if you haven't. It was so... Like, someone asked on our Q&A, what's your idea of, like, a good Raw... Shit that builds up to a match like this is a good raw. <laughs> this match was perfect. Seth Rollins is my hero. <sighs> wow. So then Christian cuts a promo about how he's going to win the chamber. It was just way better than Daniel Bryan's promo. That's all I have to say about that. AJ versus Cameron. You oh, wanted to make a note about Cameron's <laughs> appearance in this AJ match. AJ came, comes out. This match wasn't even announced. I wanted to take a dump during this match, yeah, by the way. She, that's what the divas have been reduced to. <laughs> AJ blabs about how uh, she, her, I don't know, I guess like Naomi was the number one contender or something, and now she has a broken face, so she can't fight. Her face was broken. So before. then Cameron, Ernest the Cat Miller's music hits, and Cameron comes out, 
And the way the camera like zooms to her, we're supposed to be like, oh my god, it's Cameron! Like an oh shit moment. <laughs> but no fucks were given. You know, when you come into the ring and you start throwing pom-poms around, you just lose all credibility. So AJ, the match AJ, sucked. AJ Tamina won. kicked AJ by accident. Ooh, they're teasing something. No one cares about the Divas. <laughs> they're not giving us anything. To but we get a bad news back from afterwards and that made everything better. But then we cut to... I, I can't even talk about it. Dude. What? What are we, what are we cutting leaving. to? What are we cutting to? Uh, oh, jeez. Probably the most pointless backstage segment I've seen. Santino, Kali, El Torito, the Matadors, and Emma all playing with that Lego play set. I mean, they didn't even try to tell you what they were playing with. They're just playing with it. People paid money for this. <laughs> you fucking asshole. Jesus fucking Christ. Alright. So then Batista fought Del Rio. Del Rio came out in like normal clothes with a crutch and a neck brace and he's like, I can't fight, senor! But then he started beating him with a, with a crutch and I was like, oh! It was all a sting. The match never got off the ground because the crowd didn't give it a chance. I'm really fucking tired of these fucking smarks just booing Batista. Did, because... wait, so, so, did you want Daniel Bryan to fight Del Rio tonight? <laughs> I thought you wanted him in the main event. Why? why, well, why we don't want part timer why, why, on our pay per view. He's not a part timer. He was at a house show the other night. Why? Why did you boo this match? I don't. I don't get it. I don't know what you so want. You took the air out of it before it even began. Del Rio and Batista both looked like they didn't want to be there, and I didn't blame them. Let me explain something to you. You're pissed off that Daniel Bryan wasn't in this match? He was in the main event at this pay-per-view. What do you want? I don't know what you want. I really, I'm, I, you're fucking retarded. You're exceptional individuals. There, that's the PC way to say it. So then we cut to the stupid panel that they do at every pay-per-view. They're talking about, who do you think's going to win the chamber? I think Daniel Bryan's going to win. I think John Cena's going to win. Rey Mysterio goes, well, everyone's been in the chamber before except for Cesaro. Really? Yeah, what about that great chamber that Christian was in? Remember that one? No, I don't, because he wasn't in one. Was he? He might have been. He wasn't. They've been talking all month about a Christian's never been in one. Oh, all right. <laughs> Brilliant work, Rey Mysterio. Thank you. He really, by the way, we should just add this. Rey Mysterio on that panel looked like he would have rather been anywhere else but yeah. on that panel. <laughs> it was kind of depressing. He's like, wow, this guy used to be a great, well, not a great champion, but a great cruiserweight champion. But now what is he? He's just some fucking douchebag on a panel. So here comes the chamber. Why, why, why does Randy Orton have to walk so slow to the ring? I literally fall asleep. It's like, like why don't we complain that they skip the entrances? Like, why don't they skip his? Undertaker's entrance is quicker than his. Whatever. I get creepy vibes from the stupid yes chants, by the way. Like, they're the reasons Obama got elected, because these people are just drooling like, ah, ah, ah. They don't even know why they're doing it, because they don't really like this guy. No one does. So, I don't know. Cesaro and the Great White Goof started off. Cesaro did the perfect dropkick, and the fans were chanting, we the people, so why don't Smarks think he's the most over <laughs> of all time? Oh, my goodness. Oh, God almighty. I don't fucking know. Out comes Steve Cropper from his pod. Fake looking kicks ensue. He's just. He just kills matches. Like, he's like a vacuum of entertainment. You're like, oh, you're enjoying watching Sheamus and, and Cesaro? Oh, here comes the vacuum. He just comes in. They should just call him the vacuum. He comes out and says, here goes all the entertainment. I'm just going to kick people. Brilliant work. We love you. You're the best wrestler of all time because you kick people. I don't know. So Cropper puts Sheamus in a pin. But both of their shoulders were down. Yeah, he like had somebody in some kind of leg lock, and then someone else comes running, so he does a, a suplex while he had the guy locked in the, with his feet. But his shoulders were down, so it just looked ridiculous. Like he's pinning the guy, but both of their shoulders are down, which would have resulted in a double elimination. So what way to make it believable, best wrestler of all time? And it's worth noting, Cena sucks chance ensued before he even came out of his pod. <laughs> Alright, now here's... Everyone in this match, with the exception of Orton and, of course, Steve Cropper, because he's the best wrestler of all time, had a really cool spot. Even John Cena did something awesome in this match. We're going to start with Cesaro. C 
Christian was like climbing the cage. Cesaro, like, what did he do? He, he, like, catch him? he catches him on the he fly off the cage. Power bombs him through one of the pods. How awesome is this guy? How can anyone say that Daniel Bryan is better than a guy who catches someone, lifts him up, and throws him through glass? Because Daniel Bryan does kicks? Whatever. I'm tired of screaming. Bryan's not strong kicking. enough to do that. We'll get to that later. Uh, Cena, by the way, debuted new gray jorts tonight <laughs> to go on with his lime green armband, so that was nice. This, this made me want to kill myself. Cesaro did a really cool looking uppercut to Cena, and Cole starts screaming, He caught him in the chin! He caught him in the chin! He caught him in the chin! Cesaro caught him in the chin! Will you shut the fuck up, please? I know we always complain that you're deadpan and you don't make it fun anymore, but this just makes me want to kill myself when you're forcing it. Oh, he caught him in the chin! He caught him in the chin! Great! Try screaming when something really cool happens instead of something that you know isn't going to result in a pin. <laughs> Fucking retarded bullshit that we have to deal with with these commentators. And you know while that was happening, JBL was probably just sitting there like... <laughs> I love it, Michael. <laughs> I love it. You know, these guys don't sell the match. I was just having flashbacks today of Taz. <laughs> now, he was a complete retard. But he was but our Bless retard. his soul. He tried to be an analyst. Like, <laughs> typical Taz thing. It makes no sense, but A for effort. He would go, Oh, man, the vicious attacks of those deltoids by Lesnar into the windpipe angle. All the blood flow in the windpipe angle. Oh, well, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Anatomically, but... it makes no fucking sense, but he made it fun. He the, made it sound the epic. Vicious attacks of the, to the... But the deltoids of Lesnar cut the wind blood pipe. right out of that windpipe of Lesnar. It's like, yeah, it makes no fucking sense, and it's stupid, but it's fun. And that's what wrestling should be stupid and fun. These guys are just stupid. <laughs> so just he's, Brian just sucks the life right out of matches. After amazing spots like the one I just mentioned, you didn't even finish going through the cool spots. He just starts kicking people though. All right, here I did not expect this. All right, Orton comes out, he locks himself back in the pod because he's a coward. And Sheamus does one of the coolest things I've ever fucking seen. He bro kicks him through the glass. I marked I out immediately for started marking out, and I'm not gonna jump to conclusions and say my opinion has totally changed, but I'm willing to watch and maybe appreciate more what this guy has to offer. That was awesome. If they play up the goofy Irishness of him, it'd be a lot better. But that was a really cool spot, and it looked real. Man. So then Cesaro swings Orton 30 times. Another cool spot from Cesaro. So then Christian had probably one of the coolest spots in the match, like in like the top two of the night. Frog splashes off of the pod and pins Sheamus. That was very cool. So how does he reward him for that? Brian does his retarded knee to the face, completely misses, and pins him. I didn't even realize that was supposed to be a finisher when I saw it. I thought it was just going to lead to like a flurry of clotheslines. I didn't realize that that contact he made was his finishing move. That's how weak and pathetic it looked. You know, I am fucking sick of this shit. What does this guy have to offer in the ring? Especially what does he have to else? offer? I don't get it. Maybe you feel bad that he's small and that WWE has buried him, but when it comes down to like the bare basics in the ring, he was outclassed by everybody else in that fucking Even chamber. Even John Cena. Even John Cena. Because John Cena did another. Uh, like I'm not. Even, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it just because it's John Cena. It was a fucking awesome spot. All right. So Cena and Brian get isolated, and the way the cameras are set up, it's like, oh shit, this is the matchup in the chamber that we all wanted to see. Meanwhile, it was the only one that we were probably all directly opposed to see. Yeah. But that's besides the point. He fu's who was he? I think it was Cesaro. Yeah. Through a piece of glass that came through that came off one of the pods. That's hardcore shit. But what pissed me off is that he gets him to tap out with the STFU. Like. Of all the ways for Cesaro to get eliminated, you make him tap out to Cena? I would rather have seen him tap out to the Yes Lock, or to an RKO. But he taps out to John Cena, that's great. Way to reward the guy who put on two of the best spots in the whole fucking match, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. I forgot to mention, just thing that Cesaro did, I can't believe it, because this... I'm, I know I've been saying this the whole time, this was the coolest spot in the match. <laughs> he German suplexes oh. Cena, while Cena has Brian on his shoulders for the FU. The strength of this guy is unbelievable. Can someone please tell me why a bunch of kicks 
is is better than that? We're gonna make a video. That's our next video. How is Daniel Bryan better than Antonio Cesaro? How is he? Because I don't see it, you fucking neckbeards. <laughs> so at this point, it's just Cena, Cropper, and Orton in the ring. Uh, he puts Orton in the STFU, but then the Wyatts come out. They beat the shit out of Cena, and Orton pins him. Now, that was cool. The fans were chanting, thank you, Wyatts. But this is going to lead to a Wyatt burial at WrestleMania. Yeah, I have, and I, I do I have not a bad see feeling that. about this. Oh, but it's also worth noting, going back to our shitty commentary note there, that the sheep mask comes on, the, the lights go off, and Cole's like, who, who could that be? Why can't I see anything? <laughs> I have no comment. I, who the fuck else would come out to a sheep? Alright, whatever, I don't care. I don't care. So Cena's oh, gone. But did he expect the lights to come on and Santino and Emma come running down the ramp like that? If that happened, I would have killed myself. <laughs> so oh, it's, just so or it's just Orton. Well, and first Brian. Kane shows up to shoo the Wyatts out, and then all right. So here we go. It's Orton and Brian with Kane in the ring, just to get the Wyatts out. Did any of these fucking brain dead drooling mongoloids? Honestly, think that Brian was gonna win. They're gonna pretend to be upset I'm wrestling for him because they're fucking mouth breathing douchebags, but. I, all right, we're not. Did you really think, even if you think this feud is gonna end with Brian the champion, why would it happen at Elimination Chamber and not WrestleMania? <laughs> what? There was absolutely never a chance of the belt changing hands now, so there was no reason for anyone to be upset. You can watch anyone's prediction videos. Everyone unanimously said, oh, Orton's going to win, no question. It wasn't even a doubt in anyone's fucking mind. So, for no reason at all, Steve Cropper beats the shit out of Kane. Because he's trying to shoo the Wyatts? I don't know. Yeah, that's another thing. Kane wasn't bothering Brian, <laughs> so Brian just beats the shit out of him. So in the kayfabe world, if Kane comes back and takes out Brian, that makes perfect sense. Brian's at fault! He's not getting screwed, he picked the fight! So, here's Brian's cool spot. You know how everyone, we just said had a cool spot? Except for Orton, because Orton's completely worthless in the ring. But, Brian does a backdrop off the second rope. And he almost, off the second rope, and he almost drops fucking Orton. It looks so It wasn't sad. a throw, Orton just falls off the turnbuckle, because this fucking pathetic, flabby, unimpressive, disgusting, looks like he hasn't bathed, filthy goat! isn't strong enough to lift anything! Compare that to Luke Harper throwing Rollins and Rollins landing on his feet. I can't take this shit! He couldn't lift Orton off the Ray second Orton row is one of and the make a backdrop guys. look convincing. Are you fucking kidding me? All you have to do for a backdrop is hold on. You just get a little bit of momentum. Orton just falls Orton, off. Like, the guy you're lifting will take care of the fall. You just have to hold on. It's not believable. It's, He's not believable. He has no fucking charisma. He goes like this, and all the drooling neckbeards in the crowd start doing it too. That's it. There's nothing to him. There's nothing to his character. He has no moveset. He does a bunch of fucking lame-looking kicks. That's it. And while he's doing the kicks, he's slapping his thigh. So you see that it's obviously fake. I feel like I'm in the fucking Twilight Zone here. Cesaro's flinging people around. Rollins is doing backflips. No, no, and no. this fucking you're, you're, you're bringing up such a good point because we're literally the only people online who have this opinion. I don't. Why does no one else see it? Why does everyone think this guy is the best wrestler in the world? Anyone from Wrestling Forum, if you're watching this, post this on a thread so we can get people talking about this. Topic. I don't get it. Why? Antonio Cesaro is in the fucking ring and people are screaming about this goat. He belongs in a petting zoo. He belongs in a behind the fucking electric cage in the Bronx Zoo with toddlers throwing him crackers. <laughs> That was very graphic. No, but fucking A. He offers nothing. Jesus fucking Christ. Absolutely Wake nothing. Up. They have these delusions that this fucking guy is Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit. I've got news for you. He's not. And when guys like Luke Harper can make the cruiserweight high flying moves look more convincing, when guys like Seth Rollins can outdo him 17 times in one fucking match, and when guys in the same match as him 
Guys that suck like John Cena and Sheamus can do amazing things yeah. and get no credit for it, but this fucking guy is touted no, as the I'm, best. I'm, I'm sorry that you want him to have the belt and never lose it ever again. I'm sorry that that's not going to happen. I'm sorry that not only did he not win tonight when he wasn't expected to, but I'm sorry that he didn't fight Del Rio also, because that's obviously what you wanted, because you fucking booed Del Rio and Batista out of the building Batista, because they the weren't best goats. Of this fucking decade because he's not a worthless piece of vanilla midget crap. This was fucking offensive. So, like everyone predicted, Kane came in, he punched Brian for the RKO. There you go. And in the fake world of wrestling, it was a provoked punch. Yeah, in the logic of WWE, in their little world, Kane had every right to do what he did because Brian, for no fucking reason, decided to hit him. That's brilliant. Great storytelling. And then they get all these reaction shots of people like, Oh, oh, Brian didn't win. Yeah, he didn't win. He was never going to win. He was never going to win the Royal Rumble. It was never going to happen. And you're all shocked that it didn't. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't get it. Can, is this country that stupid? I don't get it. <laughs> Everyone... Ah, ah, ah. Thanks a lot, you motherfuckers. This guy's got a fucking goat. So, overall, I liked the show. It was a good show, but the fucking crowd hijacked it. Fucking Daniel Bryan's a worthless piece of shit. I can't take it. He did nothing in this fucking chamber match that warranted him the best wrestler in the world. He did world. nothing in his entire fucking WWE tenure that warrants any kind of accolade whatsoever. What's Team Hell No that impressive? What's one impressive thing he's done in How do you go from Team Hell No to, oh my god, you need to be in the fucking main event? Did anyone think he was the best wrestler of all time when he was hugging it out with Kane and Dr. Shelby? Now, I got news for you. The way the crowd has just been shitting on everything, there's probably a good chance that they're going to have him win at WrestleMania. I hope it happens. Because I want you to see, after he's got his fucking belt, after he has his moment with all the drooling mongoloids Mouth doing the yes chant in the Superdome, once he has the belt and the chase is over and he actually has to start selling pay-per-views and merchandise promo promo. on the basis of his wrestling skills, once the chase is over and he has to rely on his wrestling skills, it's done because he has none. I hope he wins the belt so you can see the ratings and the buy rates tank when this guy is the main event. I want him to win now because I want to prove to you that it's going to fucking suck. It's... There's no way that he can ever, ever, ever move merchandise, okay? You really think you, people... No one's gonna buy a shirt with a cartoon goat on it if you're over the age of six! It's not gonna happen. I can't... I can't he's, believe it. I, I'm... He's got this following now because there's this illusion that he's being screwed. Once that's done, once he gets his payoff, it's over. They can try to push him. They can try and say there's a yes movement. By the way, when they put that up on Twitter, hashtag yes movement is trending worldwide, I checked. It's not. It's not. They, they openly lie about Twitter all the time, by the way. I, know, I don't know if you noticed that, but we're getting off topic. Fuck Daniel Bryan. So, you want to make any more remarks or is yeah. completely out of breath? Every, for everybody who says this company has no future, you saw the future tonight. You saw it in The that Shield, match. The Wyatts, Cesaro. He, is it, when fucking Sheamus does cool shit, he could be entertaining. Swagger and Langston put on a good match. They did. They put on a pretty good opening match. You don't need Brian. You don't need that fucking crybaby pervert CM Punk. You don't need these douchebags. You don't need them because they're not entertaining. There should be a new rule. Because there's these fucking Ring of Honor hipsters who all of a sudden thought... The, the cool thing now is to watch wrestling and bitch and whine that it doesn't fit their mold of what's good. The new rule should I be take it. if you're under six foot and you're under a hundred pounds like Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, you shouldn't be allowed in the fucking company because you you can't lift people. That that spot that spot with Orton was potentially dangerous. Orton could have landed wrong because fucking Cropper can't hold on. That's great. Or because he can't hold on, he can hurt himself. And we're not saying short people don't belong in the company, but you need to offer us something. You can't just be short and say, well, I'm short, I want to be here. No, you gotta fucking back it up in the ring. He's not doing it. I'm sorry, he's not doing it. You're in denial. I hear about the... I'm, we're gonna rant. I hear about this fucking move set. I feel like idiocracy. The movie... If you haven't seen Idiocracy, watch it, because it's a great commentary on our society. But these fucking... 
morons in the movie are wondering why their crops aren't growing <laughs> they're pouring, because they're pouring like the equivalent of Gatorade on it and the guy <laughs> is telling them it's not going to grow you have to put water on it and they go but but this has electrolytes that's what we're like we're like how is Brian good because like, he has electrolytes and like, oh but he's good he's the best wrestler in the world but why is he the, why best, is he the best wrestler in the world well, you just don't get it yeah I don't get it and you can't explain it to me I would understand completely if you felt Cesaro was being screwed out of the top, or if you felt the shield were being buried. Why this guy? Why do you have to ruin everything because you're not happy that this fucking subhuman goat who belongs in a petting zoo is not the champion? He's like a retarded Neanderthal, and it's one thing to just, oh, I'm upset about Brian not being in the main event. It's another thing to literally ruin a fucking match because of it. So even if you don't like Batista, it's not fair to a guy like Del Rio, who puts on better But no, 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 it's not fair to fucking Batista, because everyone's complaining that there's no real main eventers in the company. You get one, the best one of the last decade. He's not a part-timer, like you're saying. He's there doing house shows, signing a full-time two-year, how long, two-year contract? He's there every fucking week. But no, 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 oh, he's part-time. Why is he part-time? How is he part-time? So, we enjoyed the show. I'm sorry that the neckbeards who have no life outside of this little fake world Vince McMahon has created didn't enjoy it. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. It looks like you're going to have Batista and Orton at WrestleMania. I wouldn't be surprised if they stick Brian in there to appease you. And quite frankly, I hope he wins the belt so you can see what happened. I'm sorry that we have to shoot WWE like this in the foot. But if this is what... You needs to be done so you fucking losers can see that this guy has no talent and he doesn't belong in the big leagues, well, then so be it, okay? This guy, look at the card of WrestleMania 20, 10 years ago. Would this guy have fit in a card with Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels and Triple H and Goldberg and Brock Lesnar? Would he have fit on that card? Anyway, yeah. Would he have fit in the Cruiserweight Open with Chavo Guerrero and Billy Kidman? Jerry, no. Where would he have fit? How is this guy a fucking wrestler in the big leagues? Get the fuck out of here. I swear to God. I know we're dragging this on, but when John Cena does something I, cool... We, we hate John Cena. We think he's a booking whore. We think he's an asshole backstage. We think his character sucks. We think his matches sucks. But at least he has... Like, he's strong. He, he, has, he has something, something to offer. Oh. End of show. Fuck Cody Rhodes. Fuck Cody Rhodes.